Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. I'm Joseph. I'm Guy. And I'm Dan. Today we're doing something a little different. This will be aimed at uh, more new players or players just looking to get into Blood and Plunder. In Blood and Plunder, there's several different nations you can play as in the 17th and 18th century. And then within those uh, nation umbrellas, there's different factions. So when you approach the game, you kind of have to decide what nation you want to play, maybe what faction. But you really have to decide what nation because your decision there is going to affect what you buy. There's different miniatures for each line, each nation, some crossover, but that's one of the first decisions you're going to make. We think some nations are more appropriate to jump into early or easier to play. Uh, so we're going to chat a little bit about that. But as always, there is a rule for what the best faction or nation to play. And what is that rule, Dan? I shall read from the book of Wargaming. <clears throat> Whatever mortals looketh the coolest, thou shalt start it with to thine personal tastes. Very true. Very, very true. Whatever looks cool. <laughs> there you go. So whatever looks cool is going to be fun. Uh, any thing you buy you're going to be able to play some of them have more or harder rules or a little harder to win with but you're always going to be happier playing whatever looks cool to you or whatever you have a connection to if you have dutch heritage or native american heritage it's kind of fun to have that personal link but there are some nations that are a little easier to jump in i thought we could each kind of name a nation or faction that we think is quite good and then maybe one or that's a little harder to start as that sound good yeah it does sounds good to me you want to lead us off guy sure i will uh i'll just talk about my own experiences i started with the french mainly because of the in the area the french are one of the ways to get into the pirate or uh, buccaneer factions uh buccaneers in this game can be mainly french or mainly english and uh, the French box seemed to have a lot of cool-looking models in it with uh, long guns, and I liked that. So uh, with the French box, it does have some problems, but it allows you to play French Buccaneers or the French Caribbean Militia, which is one of my favorite factions. And, it, and those are kind of their two flagship land and... C factions, right? The Caribbean Militia is a good land faction. The Buccaneers are a solid C faction. Yeah, the French Buccaneers is a, a great faction. In addition, the box lets you play as the Brethren of the Coast, which is the, the kind of the main C faction uh, for pirates or for the unaligned. So it's a, it's a really good start uh, if you want to be if you want to be that guy and want to run a, a mainly long-range shooting list, it gives you Buccaneers, it gives you the uh, Bacelles de Caribbees, and it gives you Flibuses, and like all boxes, it comes with four sailors that you can kind of, like, forget about and leave home most of the time. Unless you're running a ship. Then you need more. Yeah. But the French excel in musketry, and that's reflected in their uh, starter box. And we're talking about nation boxes. Fire Alarm yeah. sells a just a box that has 25 miniatures in it. It's a good starting force for each nation. Yeah, it comes with a card, too, that conveniently lists the uh, rules for that faction and uh, the models that are in it. So that cards, I still use them these days when I'm running one of the factions because it's nice to have a little reference sheet so you don't have to flip the book open. Sure, stats, yeah. It's kind of uh, the opposite of the the box that I don't or the nation that I don't suggest starting in is uh the national box for pirates and privateers now I just mentioned I w was launching into the the French and I wanted to play pirates don't buy the pirates and privateers box if you are starting out unless of uh, there's some corner case scenarios but the pirates and privateer box comes with a bunch of sailors and it comes with sailors with muskets and sailors with special arms and cannon crew <laughs> and uh the problem with the box is when you're running a a french or an english list you really want a core of of some type of musketeer unit like uh freebooters or flibuse 
or capers or uh, interplogue or something something to like build your force around to have as a good command unit. And the Pirates and Privateer box doesn't even come with a cool looking commander. It just gets you get the uh, Reformato commander, uh, which is an officer or a, a character. So that's kind of for me. That's the box. That's uh, it's kind of a little bit of a trap. I would go with the French box. Now I know you guys have uh, some different opinions in mind, though. On that pirates and privateers, I just wanted to throw out there. Um, if you really like proxying, having a flexible force, that pirates and privateers can be okay. I know. Uh, Dan used that quite a bit when he was first starting out. But for new players, I think it's really nice to have your miniatures match the image in the book. So if you're playing as French and you want Fulibuzet's, you have your miniatures that look like this, and then the image in the book looks like this, and the image in your card looks like this. Easy to remember what unit is what. That I like everything to match. <laughs> Yeah, as much as I love the box, it was only ever meant as a supplement. So if you get yourself a, a nationality starter box, you decide you want to start playing some sea games, that's the next box you're going to want to buy to kind of flesh out your sailors once you have a better grip of the game. As much as I love the box, I do agree with the guy. It's not a good place to start start. What would your favorite box be to start start? My favorite box to start start, if I could do it all again, I would start with the Dutch. Primarily, I'm the, I'm the resident sea guy here. I like I got into the game because I loved the way the ships looked. If this was primarily a land game, I probably wouldn't be here. So I I would buy into the Dutch because they're really easy to play, they're easy to learn, they are really good at sea, and they reward smart gameplay without getting too bogged down in the rules. The box that comes with allows you to play the Dutch the Dutch Caribbean militia or the Dutch privateers. I find the box does both really well. The only thing you're going to be lacking on is sailors, but you can buy more sprues for that. But otherwise, you get enough units. It's a good box. All the units look really cool. I love the way the Dutch <laughs> Dutch models are sculpted. And as much as I don't like painting, I really enjoy painting my Dutch models. My enter, my beloved Enterplug in particular, I love painting them just because they look so cool with all their pistols and explosives. And they just look really mean, and I love it. As far as the worst box to go with. As much as it pains me to say this, because I'm also the pirate player typically, the unaligned box set is not a good place to start. It's very point heavy, and it doesn't have enough for what you want to do, in my opinion. It might be tempting because you get the freebooters, the filibuses, the forlorn hope or les enfants perdu, and the marineros for the little Spanish sailors or just whatever sailors you want to run them as. But they don't do well on land in that configuration. And at sea, they also don't do very well. I would avoid that at all costs. You're better off starting with one of the more traditional nations factions. If you want to get into playing better than the coast or anything, you can get more miniatures to kind of flesh that out. But as far as a starting point, the unaligned box is not a good place to start. Yeah, I don't really like the Marineros thrown in there. I, it, yeah. I think it's better to start as either English or French, and then if you want to expand it into the unaligned piratey kind of thing, you can buy the other one. If you start with English, and then buy the French box or some French units, and then you can run a nice pirate force. But getting that box, yeah, like you said, almost all the models in that box are on the more expensive, more powerful, but also much more expensive side of things. So it's hard to do a, a competitive force necessarily right away with that. It's hard to play another faction other than the Brother of the Coast out of that box as well. Because yeah, that's true. Brother of the Coast uh, is the only faction that lets you do Flea and Freebooters as both core units. Uh, every other faction that you'd go into, either French Buccaneers or English Buccaneers, or various sun drive versions of English or French, you can't bring flibuzes and the the same thing with the french list so logwood cutters you're right logwood cutters you can that is that is a good example those are but i look at that faction as being you know out of practice um <laughs> out of practice brethren of the coast i love them <laughs> what's your opinion joseph what what's the best st box to start with well i think the i was going to say the french but you already did but I think the French are a fun way to start the game. They're really good at shooting. And a fun way to play the game to start with is just shoot all your enemies to pieces. But I think the English is a good place to start, too. English are well-rounded. 
they're hard to screw up, hard to play poorly. Uh, they aren't as good at shooting as the French, but they're also better at melee in general. Uh, that's not always true, but they're more well-rounded. The French have really good shooters and really good melee guys. English are uh, sturdy. They don't run away. They're good in a fight. They're decent at shooting. And the box is good. It has eight militia, which are going to be one of the units you use a, use a lot. Eight freebooters, which are kind of your uh, professional buccaneer guy with a long uh, musket and a pistol. And then it has a boarding party with grenades and some sailors. So you can do a quite well-rounded sea force right away. And you can do a decent land force as well. They're forgiving. I mean, that was my first box. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a good place to start. But the French and English both. The Dutch share some of those traits with the English. They're well-rounded, but they do lean towards sea games. If you like sea, that's great. But if you want to do land and sea, I prefer the English or the French slightly. And then as far as a harder place to start, I love playing the Native Americans in the game. It's a... Uh, Native Americans only show up in the first expansion. They aren't in the core uh, rule book. But No Peace Beyond the Line adds a bunch of native factions. Really fun to play, but they're definitely rules heavy. A lot of rules for sneaking and running and hiding and bows. bows. And <laughs> things. Yeah, bows. <laughs> Poison arrows. So if you want, if you're hungry for rules, I think it's a great place to start. But if you want to just get introduced to the a game, the core of the game is the 17th century European factions. Uh, so the natives are rough to start on, but they're really fun and rewarding to learn how to play. And they're, I think they're the least played nation in the game too. So if you want to be a little different than most of the folks in your group, I think the natives are a good place to start if you love to read your rule book a lot. And you want to, they are some of the more entertaining to paint too, because with this being a 17th century game, all of the European powers have various belts and and vests and cartridges oh, yeah. and and uh, uh, bandoliers. <laughs> yeah, the floppy hats and feathers. Uh, well, Native Americans have feathers too, but a lot of them are very simply dressed and uh, beautiful models too. So it's yeah. kind of kind of a lot of different. You get to paint some uh, natural earth tones in the. The stuff they uh, they decorate their bodies with, like their uh, their feathers in their hairs, and they have these little straps on their arms. They're they're really fun models to paint. I should uh, talk about the European colonial powers box. There's a European militia box that has some cavalry and artillery piece and some well, regular type of unit, um, professional unit. It's a fun box. But it's really not great for newer players either, I think, since the cavalry is kind of a wild card in the game. Artillery is kind of specialized, too. So you only can make one or two different uh, forces with that. And you can play it as English or French or Dutch or Portuguese or English or whatever. But I would not start there just because there isn't as many points in that. That box it's, and it's harder to make an interesting list with it so it's a good supplement to one of the nation boxes kind of like the pirates and privateers good for expanding your force if you want to play that kind of uh three branch uh force with artillery infantry and cavalry but other than that it's not a great place to start you have to dedicate yourself to the militia cause and then the other problem i have with that box is uh, all things in the box other than the European soldiers, you really, you'll have to buy more of. Um, five five cavalry is okay, but you usually want a little bit more of them because you're going to have so many of them die. <laughs> Four cannon crew are okay with one field gun, um, but most of the time I've brought a field gun in a land list. It's at a higher point value. And I yeah. bring more than one field gun, so that way um, I can cover multiple different lines. So you're going to want more field guns, too. So we've looked at every box except one. Yep. <laughs> the Spanish box. I think the Spanish are an okay place to start, too. Historically, they're really central to the action in the New World, obviously. Um, in Blood and Plunder, 
they're we contend they're one of the weaker factions, a little bit harder to win with. They take a little more skill to play well. Historically, they weren't the most brave or well equipped, <laughs> <laughs> and that's reflected in the game well. But it also makes them a little harder to win with. But the box is a pretty good box. It has yeah, I think it's a good all box. the models you need to play at land in land on land or sea. So it's if you like Spanish and don't mind being the underdog, it's a good place to start too. But if you want to win, <laughs> French or English or Dutch. Yeah, the Spanish box is a weird place to start because it is such a good box. It gives you eight militia. It gives you eight uh, lanceros, which are kind of your Malay dedicated unit. And it gives you four of your harassing um, miscellaneous indios, which are a great unit to use the Spanish militia uh, lay and wait ability with. Because you can like have them pop eight inches or nine inches away from an opponent and rain them with, with arrows the first turn. <laughs> But yeah, those quick and slippery Indians with bows, part of the Spanish character is fun. Yeah, but it's not a it's it's not going to be a good place to start playing Blood and Plunder um, unless you want to dedicate yourself to like learning how to use, like you said, a mechanically complex um, faction that doesn't play like any other faction <laughs> or nationality. So we've looked at the various uh, nations or factions you can start as. And then let's take a quick look at how you can buy into the game. Uh, Firelock offers at the smallest level just a pack of four miniatures of a diff uh, each unit. They offer commanders, and then they offer some discounts for some uh, different ways of bundling things together. What we have been referring to mostly is these nation boxes. Starter boxes. Starter boxes, okay. Yeah. They have 25 miniatures in them, so basically six of the blisters of four minis each, and then one commander. Each nation has their own unique scope of the commander, and those are currently $120, and you save about $10 by buying that set as opposed to buying them in blisters. So that's a really great place to start. You obviously need the rule book as well, and maybe... Uh, some cards or dice. Um, and you can see some of the more detailed outline of things you'll need in the article getting started in Blood and Plunder on Blood and Pigment. And then there's some larger packages. What have they got in the Nation Bundle? So the Nation Bundle comes with one of the starters we were just talking about. And it comes with a ship of your choice. Now it adjusts its, pr its price based on the ship that you would want, but you save a, a portion of the bundle of uh, whatever ship you choose. So uh, we've talked before about the best ship to start with is a sloop because it is easy to sail and you can use it in a variety of point games. But you can also pick up a bark if you like how barks look. And you save about $37 buying the Nation Bundle, which is as of January 2000 and the 19th of January 2022, <laughs> the Nation Bundle is 167 And it also comes with a deck of cards for your trouble, too, for whatever nation you want. And then the next step above that is the two-player starter set. Do you have the details on that, Dan? Yeah, the two-player starter set is about $165, and it comes with, what, 20, 26 models? Yep. 26 and models. 26 models, and it comes with the rule book. it comes with two decks of cards, and with all of that wonderfulness, it's about $165, and you save 65 by buying into that. It's a good place for two people to start, or one greedy person to start with all of it. <laughs> You can, with the two-player starter set, you choose two nations to fight each other, and you can just choose the same nation, and it will just double up what you get in that, that set. <laughs> so that's you'll get two deck of cards uh, uh, of that nation as well, and twice as many dice. But it's a fun, it's, you know, an okay thing to do if you don't, uh, if you want to do 
something more than the starter set, you know, the nationality starter sets, and you need a rule book. Yeah, uh, you could get French and English, 13 models of each, and then you have a really good pirate or brethren of the coast kind of unaligned buccaneer kind of faction. Plus you get 120 for a starter set, 40 for the rule book. There's your 160. Plus you get the two car- decks of cards for free. They're about 20 bucks each, and you get some free dice. So definitely some savings here. And then if you want to go whole hog all in, the two-player deluxe bundle is where you will spend and save the most money. Uh, the two pl- the deluxe two-player starter bundle comes with two arcs, so you have a ship. It comes with the deluxe rule book, uh, very fancy. It has uh, includes no piece beyond the line, which is really a uh, huge expansion that really expands the game into so many other areas. It it's really necessary. Interesting. <laughs> necessary. necessary. Yeah. Well, it's not necessary, but it will triple your enjoyment. I think. And two decks of cards and the movement template and like the blow up templates and markers and stuff. Uh, dice. So it's $350, which is a good piece of cash, but you save about $200. So these packages, Firelock is able to offer directly through their website. You can't buy this from a retail store, so Firelock's able to discount them more. So this is the way to say, buy the most for the least, the best savings, but it is a hefty investment right up front. But you wouldn't have to have two players to play this. I mean, if you want to get into the English and French at the same time, you get a couple of ships, fancy rule book. And it doesn't have to be two player, just be one pre player. This is another way, like what we alluded to earlier, using the Pirates and Privateers box to fill out the crew on a ship. Because if you want to pick up a French nationality box and then the Pirates and Privateer, that can give you, that would give you. 12, 16 crew to run one of these barks, plus your militia units to be on land, and your flibusets as a command group. Yeah, a lot of fun combinations you can do there. You can do Spanish and Native American. They have a lot of crossover. You can do a big Spanish force that way. English and French, you can do a big pirate list. Yeah, depending... You can either make two lists or have two list, uh, boxes that work well together. But it's expensive, but you get a lot. You can save a lot of money, too. Like they said, the only thing it's missing is the table to play it on and the measuring tape. If you're any self-respecting gamer, should have those two things. So. <laughs> well, I hope that helps a little. If you're looking to get into Pl- Blood and Plunder, it's a great game, good community. A lot of different options for jumping in. can be a little confusing. Hope that helps. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop it in the comments, and we'll try to address those quickly. And you can always check out bloodandpigment.com, which is where we have a bunch of articles on the blog there. We have a lot, all the nations kind of uh, sketched out in article form where you can kind of get a flavor of how they play and the various factions available to them, plus articles on lots of other Blood and Plunder topics. So check it out at bloodandpigment.com. Also, keep an eye on the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. And as always, keep your dice ready in the wind at your back, yarhar.